Um, so in order to begin work on these last two phases, TCHC is going to be issuing what's called a request for proposals to the broader development community for the phase four and five lands. Um, some of the, the questions we got on Tuesday were about, well, well why do we need to do this? Uh, Daniels has been working with TCHC all along. Why would we consider going out and possibly working with somebody else? And the answer is, we love the work that we've done together with Daniels to date. TCHC is really proud and thrilled that Daniels um, has worked so closely with us and is committed so deeply to the same vision and the same set of principles that TCHC has and that this community has for redeveloping revitalization. But we have a certain procurement policy. We have a certain way that we must sell lands because we are a public agency. And so what I wanted to share with you was sort of that process. So I'm here as a Regent Park resident mm -hmm. and a member of the Regent Park Neighbourhood Association and I've been working with the executive team over the last few weeks as we've tried to respond to the sudden announcement by Toronto Community Housing about changes to phases four and five of the redevelopment. Okay, what are the main points that you're going to talk about here? So tonight we're just going to talk about uh, kind of our reaction as a community because I think this was very much a surprise announcement made at the last minute and no information has been made available and the understanding of the community has always been that um, critical to this redevelopment is the idea of a single reputable developer who will lead the entire process and Daniels was announced as that developer back in 2009 and that message has stayed the same since 2009. I don't think anyone in the community knew that back in 2013, and we just found out about this a couple of weeks ago, that Toronto Community Housing actually changed the contract. They had previously awarded all future phases of Regent Park to Daniels. And then in 2013, when they were renegotiating the phase three uh, contract, they removed uh, all future phases. And they never told anyone in the community, even though they had publicly and widely announced that Daniels would be the lead of the redevelopment for all phases. When they changed that in 2013, they didn't let anybody know. And they didn't let anybody know until three weeks ago in the community. And they announced it at a meeting and said that uh, we're going out to, to tender uh, it's for a competitive bid for this project. We're inviting multiple developers to come in and bid for this. And it was just the, the first that anyone heard, and, and, it was, and it's weeks away. So, and we've tried to get more information from Toronto Community Housing about it, and it's been very difficult to get information. So we're quite concerned Why about the... Uh, well, I'm not sure. They don't want to share information. They haven't made any information publicly available. There's nothing on the website. Uh, they have only verbally uh, announced it to the community. And we've had some email exchanges and some meetings with Toronto Community Housing to find out more, but it's been very painstaking. We're finding that we have to ask the right question if we actually want to get the right answer. So it feels like a lot of the information is being withheld and I'm not sure why. Um, I know procurement processes can be uh, delicate and it's a possibility that they don't want to be out making public statements about it because they don't want to interfere with the public process. But, you know, I don't know that that's, uh, I don't know that if that's really a good enough reason. You know. My name is Marlene DeGenova. Um, I am a member of the RPNA here in Region Park. I've lived here for seven years. Some of the concerns we have about this shift is, first of all, when we came in, we were told that we would have one developer for the entire uh, community. Okay. And in that time, and as I said, for me, it's been seven years, um, for those of us who are activists in the area, you, you get to know the developer, you develop relationships, you're able to get things done quickly, they respond to you, uh, and we, we come to trust each other, okay? When you switch developers mainstream, you know, in this mainstream, then we have to start that process all over again. And what happens effectively is that we as a community are shut down. Our voices won't be heard. 
for a long, long time. Transparency is what they promised us when we came to live here. And transparency is what we expect. And we expect to be told the truth before it happens, not, not be informed after the decisions are made. We would have liked to have known about this. Apparently they've known this for four years and we found out three weeks ago. That's not the way this works, okay? Also, they, they have said that timelines won't change, that the, uh, the, the design and so forth of the neighborhood won't change. We know that the that's impossible for the timelines. The timelines have to change. It, with the process of finding a new developer, you're going to spend, they're going to spend until December, January before they even find someone who will fill the bill. Now, there's no guarantee that they're going to look to take somebody else. It may very well be that Daniel's come back. The point is we don't know. And we've questioned this process, why they, why they get into this process at all, or at least why they didn't tell us. So the fact that it's going longer and longer, we were told that this was a 12 to 15 year plan. They're now talking about it as the norm, a 15 to 20 year plan. So they know it's going to take much longer. And that too means that people who are sitting in really terrible conditions in North Regent Park are going to continue to sit there and they won't be ripped down right away. And we worry about that. Um, a voice in the community is what we expected, and we're not prepared to lose that. It's important because a lot of the residents we've been lied to is that there's no transparency with TCHC of phase four and five. They've been hiding uh, information instead of giving it to the uh, residents of Toronto Housing uh, as a resident of TCHC. And why are you expecting for um, Well, we would like for them to have that respect as us as living as a low income and TCHC and that we are valid um, residents and that we need to really be respected and uh, give us the information not at the last minute. Um, how long have you been a resident? I've been living here for 29 years. Oh, okay. So I was here since the beginning of uh, the revi and all the consultations and meetings and stuff from, since 2003, 4 and 5, way before. And what do you, I mean, you have a long time here yes. as a resident, so what do you think is the main thing that all the community have to know? Well, the main thing is that people need to know what's going on and what's happening, and they need to get involved on what's happening in the community because there's so many changes that we are not told. Several weeks ago, we heard from um, TCHC um, that they were planning on reaching out to other builders, uh, to possibly, for the possible replacement of our cur current uh, developer, Daniels Corporation, to complete basically the areas of phases four and five. Um, like most of you, we've always assumed that Daniels was going to fulfill the whole project. Um, and there would be one developer who would be responsible for the entire, uh, entire community. Uh, so this change in plan was, was pretty much a shock to all of us. In the last few weeks, um, as the RPNA, we've been uh, meeting with representatives of TCHC, we've been pouring through documents, and seeking the perspective of anyone who has some insight into why this decision was made. Two weeks ago, four of us, four of us went formally to the board of directors uh, of TCHC and told them about our concerns and made depositions. There are, we consider that there are some serious implications about this move, and we need to talk about it together as a community. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is just uh, walk through some of the history uh, to this decision and what we've been able to find out about the background to this uh, sudden announcement. So going back to 2005, that was the last time that there was, it's called a public procurement process, and that's how government goes out to uh, acquire uh, or purchase supplies and goods from the private sector. And there are really, really stringent rules around that. And what happens with large, complicated projects is that a request for proposal will be issued. And that's the last time that, uh, 2005 was the last time that one was issued for, for Regent Park. And that's when Daniels came forward. And Daniels was awarded phase one of the, the project, so it was, uh, 
uh, a prudent uh, start, a small start with Daniels, but the hope at that time was always that Toronto Community Housing would find a single reputable developer to partner with them on the, in the long term and to lead the entire revitalization. An indication of that was the looking at the request for proposal document back from 2005. There was an option put in that said the successful developer, if they do a good job basically in phase one, will be able to negotiate phase two with us exclusively without having to go back to competition. So by the time phase two came around, that was 2009. And obviously, the feeling by Toronto Community Housing and all the other stakeholders who were making decisions at that time was that Daniels was the long-term developer that they were looking for. And not only did they give them phase two, but at that time, they decided to award all future phases of the project to Daniels. And they publicly announced that Daniels was leading the entire revitalization. And that's really been key to the messaging around the project and the vision for the project, not just the vision for the community, but the vision for the project. And almost for the last decade now. So, um, what we found out about uh, three weeks ago, however, is that it's no longer the case that Daniels has been awarded the contract for all phases, because that changed in 2013. There, were, uh, there was new leadership at Toronto Community Housing, there was a new mayor, uh, and there were new procurement rules. And the feeling was that awarding all phases of the contract to Daniels was not consistent with the new procurement rules. So when they went to negotiate phase three, they removed all future phases of the project. Only that wasn't announced until three weeks ago. And that was the first time the community heard it. We've been believing up until now that this was a Daniels development. And buying into this notion that one reputable builder is really good for the project, it's good for Toronto community housing residents, and it's good for condo owners. Because you can go back to that developer who has staked their reputation on the project to make things happen. So we found out in 2018 that that, three weeks ago, that this was no longer the case. And it was announced as one, well, one line in a PowerPoint presentation. I wasn't at the meeting. Um, and all it said is we will continue to, to consult with the community about this process, but we have never been consulted. So this really came as a shock. It seemed like a surprise announcement at the last minute. And it's been really, really difficult to get any information about it. So I think uh, it's better for me to reiterate some of the concerns we have, and they can be best lined by these few uh, uh, statements. The first, the most important thing we found out in, in all of this process is that things are very complicated and there is no clear-cut way of finding out how we've reached here. It's, it's taken us a lot of weeks just to get a basic understanding of how the decision for, for a rebuild process has happened. We've only found out that this whole process has been known for the past five years, only through rigorous efforts on our own. So we what we would like to ask from TCAC are these. We want an explanation as to how this decision and process came about for the community. At least the documentation, uh, so, so, so that it's a clear cut, uh, well-known reasons as to how we got here. We want to be engaged in a true consultation with residents and condo owners we are the primary st stakeholders and investors in this redevelopment. Make the entire RFP public and transparent. Uh, allow us to see, review, and have input on all the solicitation documents and evaluation criteria for selecting a new developer, if it's a new developer, for phases four and five. And we want it to uh, uh, be included in the scoring matrix and the weight given to critical community issues like the developer vision, and the demonstrated experience with project to similar scope size. We know that there's issues around the legal issue, whether we can see the financials of other developers, and we're not interested in that. We let you who have experience in those matters make those decisions, but when it comes to community vision and community uh, 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 issues, we want to play a, a role in that. Um, yeah, and to, and to that I would just add that um, you know, that, that community vision is really, really important. But understanding the financial uh, criteria as well, the, the criteria for, that will constitute 70% of the, se the selection is really important too. And one of the other things that we, were we want to ask TCAC to do is, is to commit to uh, 
a realistic timeline for this RFP process. We were told that they want to have it all done and approval by the board by the end of December. So, you know, we kind of came up with that timeline thinking, wow, how do you do that within seven months? It doesn't seem realistic. Um, we also want to ask that you please address community concerns about the impact of potentially bringing a new developer on board at this late stage. We feel like you're not being honest with us about the potential for, you know, challenges that will need to be managed. And we know you haven't done this before. Uh, you haven't undertaken this type of process. I don't think you've changed, I mean, Regent Park is unique. And I don't think you've changed developers midway through a project like this before. And so we want to understand that you understand what some of the challenges will be if you bring in a new developer. And we want to know that you have a plan in place to mitigate that so that families are not affected, so that the timelines for, for four and five are not affected. I mean, this really affects people's lives. I mean, property values are one thing. But people's lives and the lives of children who only have one childhood, who are living in properties that are being managed to demolition, that is not fair to have them be subjected to delays. Or families that have no sense of certainty, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's the kids here. I mean, this is a really youthful, child-oriented community. And the state of the old housing, you know, with empty units, it becomes a safety concern. I mean, this needs to move forward quickly. And I don't know how you bring in a new developer and expect to do that. And I don't know if you've even calculated into the timelines that exist. What would happen if you brought someone in? You had to start over from scratch. So it's really, I mean, it matters to people's lives. Um, tell us how you plan to transition it, if there's a new developer coming in. And, and again, really identify the risk to the current timelines in particular. And one more thing, um, as our PNA, we're developing a voice in this community. And with a change, and that we, we're not able to speak to or have a voice in what's going on in our community, we will be effectively silenced. And I don't think any of us are prepared to be silenced again. What is unique about this neighborhood is that we were promised that we would take part in the creation of our own neighborhood. We can only do that if we have a voice. And if we get shut down, that's not gonna happen. So, I wanna thank you both. Uh, we're gonna move on to questions. What we have here is broken trust and broken faith on the part of a city organization who has sat on information and failed in its fundamental responsibility to recognize the redevelopment of Regent Park as a shared and cooperative process. The suggestion that we have that they're going to change developers midway through a redevelopment, when many of us participated in an announcement in 2009 saying that Daniels Corporation would be the developer for all phases of the development, is evidence of that broken trust. Whether, whether we can successfully reverse that or not, I do not know, but I encourage all of you to continue to stand up and say to the mayor, who is fundamentally involved and responsible for this, that it is not acceptable, and in the meantime, to continue to work to make sure that TCHC does not gain this process. And saying that the residents can participate in phase one and then go away for the all important 70 cents on the 70 cents on the dollar finances for stage two yeah. is unacceptable. Yeah. The process that they've proposed is not going to happen in as short order as they have proposed because they're kidding you because they don't want to acknowledge how disruptive this is going to be to the necessary for progress for people who are stuck in old housing who are waiting to come back into our community. So, I say, I say we should do the following three things. This is what I will do and I recommend it. Number one, continue to beat back these TCHC folks and let them know that it's not good enough that they've forgotten about the promises that they've made because we remember the promises that were made. Fight very hard to make sure that process is not gained and send a message clearly to all other erstwhile developers that they should find other places to apply their trade because we have our chosen developer and they earned our trust going forward. And that's what I will fight for, my number one priority, to see the redevelopment of Regent Park completed on the premise and the principles that it was established, which is what's at risk of being lost. And if we fight for it, I'm sure that the redevelopment can come forward and we can be as proud of this community as we want to be, but we cannot stand by and let them recklessly play with the model that we all bought into right from the get-go. I'm going to fight for you. Um, I have a question about 
the evaluation of Daniels, whether there was any evaluation of Daniels Corporation throughout the process and whether the community has always responded favorably because it seems like we're very upset that Daniels is not taking over, but maybe we can explore whether they actually did a great job in the last couple of years. Um, and then the last question I have is about the experts. So when we come to evaluation and we say TCHC is going to evaluate, what does that actually mean? What I want us to think about, and, and while it's true we built a relationship with the developer, and I think that that's reasonable for us to think about, it is the relationship and the communication and the transparency that is the issue here. So this is not a Save Daniels mission that the RPNA is on. This is a don't tell us stories, don't lie to us, don't keep the truth from us, and don't reveal things to us at the 11th hour. I don't think this is about Daniels. It's about the relationship that now exists with Daniels and how much value that brings to the table. Because Daniels is not perfect, and I think a lot of people like Daniels, some people don't like Daniels, some people are in between. Um, but the one thing I will say is that Daniels has staked their reputation on this project. They came in when no other developer basically would come in and invest in this community. They shared 50-50. And they shared it 50-50. They shared that risk. And I think, you know, a lot of people even laughed at Daniels when they first came in to do this Regent Park redevelopment. So, you know, they've really staked their reputation on this, this redevelopment. And going forward, what does that look like? Are we going to be consulted? Are we going to take part? Will we have input? Or are we going to be railroaded and just rubber stamp what's already been decided? These are some of the key issues, and if we make those distinctions, we will not be trapped into making us look like we only favor one group or the other. It's not about favoring groups. It's about having good standing and communicating things properly. Yes, and, I, and, and that for most of us is the most important thing. And, and in, in terms of feeling as though we weren't told, this is not the first time round, and I think Many of you will remember going to meetings that were supposed to be consultation meetings, and in fact were meetings that we were being told what was about to happen, that we no longer had any, any voice in at all. So we would watch this dog and pony show, and we would try to complain about it, but it was a done deal. This is what we're not prepared to do this go round. What I'm also hearing is a lot of anger. There's lots of anger because you know, we've built a relationship with a great developer. And I think what was underestimated was that bond that has been established over the years of working with this developer. So credit to the developer. They've done lots of great work and they've empowered so many agencies and community groups and residents on their own right. So hats off to Daniels for doing that. It does not preclude Daniels from going through this pro this process. They are a good developer and they should be putting their names in the hat. And I'm glad that you know he has residents that support um, their good work over the many years. Um, what I will say, because in previous meetings, there seems to be a connection that I could stop this from happening. I am not, as a city councillor, allowed to intrude or interfere with an RFP process. So a procurement process has happened. Uh, the mayor and council and the, the TCHC board has to go through a procurement process. I cannot stop that from happening. I will see the RFP the same time you'll see the RFP. I'm not involved in any of that. That's a pure conflict of interest. So George Smitherman to suggest on his Facebook that he will look into this and what he just grandstand and said, I'm sorry, but we don't need any more scandals, George. This we is need not your the place. On the RFP process. You're, yes, we do. you're saying you have no influence. Yeah. There's what? no process established yet. I do not it. have the ability to stop the RFP process, nor does any city council. So I just want you to know that, but that's not an option. And I will support our community. It's my community as well. I've lived here for 23 years of my life. This is where my family has settled and made their home with 13 kids. This is my space too, and I'll take ownership of that, and I'll ensure that your voice is heard, because I've heard that promise by TCHC. 
so I can make that division accountable to you. So that would be my role. Thank you. I think, you know, one of the things that I, you know, am concerned about this kind of attitude is that, you know, someone created these rules, and rules are recreated and recreated and recreated all the time. Who wrote them in stone? They didn't drop from heaven. And if we want something changed, there is no reasonable condition that we shouldn't be able to discuss it. It's not acceptable to just hear a very loud no. And we're not prepared to accept that. So whatever happens, you must consult us. This is our neighborhood. We live here. And we have a vested interest here. Do you want to? Yeah, I just want to follow up with that because, you know, I, I feel like our counselor needs to support us a bit more and really be an advocate for the community. And, and Lucy, I know what a strong advocate you can be. I know what an advocate you were for the group in, in uh, Cabbage Town who were roundly sort of uh, trounced and, and criticized for trying to stop a, a daycare uh, going into a house there. Now, I know Cabbage Town really well. I know Cabbage Town needs daycare. I also know that that proposal was the wrong proposal. I mean, it just didn't, it didn't meet a whole bunch of criteria. And I was really impressed that you stood up for the community and you let them know that you were going to fight for them. And we've been asking you to stand up for us and to fight for us. And my sense is that you're not prepared to do that because when our PNA reached out to TCHC to meet with them, they, we were hearing rumors about this for months, so we heard about this first through rumors, not through Toronto Community Housing. And our PNA, oh, the sure. leadership at no, our PNA, reached out to Toronto Community Housing and Vincent and said, we're hearing about this, what is going on? And they reached out to you and they tried to get a meeting and you didn't even respond to our PNA to show up at that meeting. And so I'm really concerned about that. We need you to fight for us and it's not necessarily about stop this process, it's about make it transparent Consult with this community. Don't hide the majority of this RFP from the public. Make it part of the public record. There's no reason for this to be hidden. And it's very detrimental to the community and to trust, and to trust in politicians in particular and city councillors to not stand behind us when making that request. And so we really need you to fight for us, to not fight for TCHC, to fight for this community and what's right. I think the other thing that I, I found interesting in what you said is that uh, you, you were very, you know, TCH was very uh, surprised that we felt this way. Why is that? Why are you so surprised? Are you not truly tapping in? So I'm, I'm kind of shocked that you say that you've been surprised. Regent Park now is made up of both market and TCH housing. And the main thing about coming here is that we were a community who would live together, that this was possible. We are neighbors, and the fact that we're neighbors is all that counts. A lot of work goes into making sure we feel like neighbors. We're here together, okay? And I find sometimes when you're dealing with just TCHC, it's something that divides us apart. And I, and I think we have to be very wary of that. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Kelly Skeeth. I'm the Development Director for Toronto Community Housing for the Region Park Revitalization. Uh, thanks very much for coming out. We were invited to answer questions for tonight's meeting, not to present. We would have been happy to present uh, how, we got, how we got to this point. Um, but I'm going to try to answer all of the questions that were on the other slide to give you some clarity and to give you some facts. Um, I think the first question people wanted answers to is, um, why can't we just go with Daniels for phases four and five? And to be clear, we have no contracts in place with Daniels or any other developer partner for phases four and five. The reason why we're going out for a public request for a proposal is because we don't have contracts in place. The role of a developer partner for TCHC in a revitalization is to be our construction manager, 
uh, for both the TCHC rental replacement buildings and also to construct all of the market buildings in the revitalization, as well as the roads and any other public infrastructure on behalf of TCHC. TCHC has oversight over these lands because we are essentially the master developer. We hold the subdivision agreement and all of those legal obligations with the city. So it's TCHC's obligations uh, that are, are withheld in these, in these legal documents and we have to manage the projects uh, with Daniels to ensure that they're built to the standards per, per those legal agreements. Um, so, in terms of things being done uh, behind the scenes, what we're trying to avoid by doing a public request for a proposal is exactly that. We are putting out a document for anyone in the city in the development community to respond to, to be completely transparent. As a public entity, we have to be completely transparent with how we procure lands because of the value of these lands and the value of these contracts. Um, secondly, we were asked we were asked by our RPNA to further articulate how the community will be involved in the procurement process. On April 19th, when we launched phases four and five, we indicated that the community would be involved in the, in the community evaluation for the developer presentations, which was done in other, in, in other examples, in other revitalization communities prior. What we heard loud and clear is that the community wants to be involved in both stages. What we have committed to is having that community involvement in both stages. In the RFEQ, we discussed having RPNA and Tenant Council involved as procurement committee members to review the terms to ensure the vision that we are articulating and asking our developer partners to respond to is true and clear and reflects the community priorities. As part of the RFEQ, TCHC wants to ensure that the community's vision that was articulated in 2005, 2006, which was further articulated uh, during a lessons learned uh, exercise in 2016, which was a, a two-day public workshop, uh, and what continues in our most recent engagement activities for our social development plan, to ensure that that community of vision is accurate. Uh, we are inviting uh, members of RPNA and TCHC Tenant Council to sit on that procurement committee so they can review the terms and make sure they are accurate. Secondly, to articulate uh, the question that was put forward on the 8th when we met with RPNA was they want to be involved in seeing the second stage, the RFP terms, and the answer is yes. The procurement committee most certainly can review the RFP terms before they are provided to the public. Yes. So once the RFP document is issued to the shortlist of vendors. We can circulate that document to RPNA, to tenant council, and whomever else requests it. Okay. okay, that's great. Good. Good. Um, so did you have other questions? Did you yeah, I mean, we were respond? hoping that you would take some time to prepare, like, I mean, to prepare these types of presentations, to give this type of presentation to the community, to put some information in writing for us that's official, that can go on your website, that we can share, that kind of gives us the timeline, that addresses some of those big questions. Sure. About what kind of plans you have? So we have written responses, which we can circulate to you. Uh, happy to, to put that up publicly as well. Yeah. What we had discussed, uh, there are two sort of working groups that we had discussed at our May 8th meeting. One was a procurement committee, and that's to guide the public request for proposal process, the two-stage public request for proposal process. The second committee or working group was called the Revitalization Working Committee, and that's to deal, and that's to address um, perhaps knowledge gaps or issues in the community to make sure that those are articulated clearly to TCHC and any potential developer partners. So that revitalization committee is something that we had suggested striking, and that would be wider than just four folks. And it's something that's been done on other revite sites, and it's something that was done in the early days um, in Regent Park. Can you tell us just a little bit about why you decided, I mean, if we're having these quarterly meetings, how come this issue never came up before? How come you never informed the community about this? The question is, if you, because we had made adjustments to our agreements with Daniels in 2013, 
to limit their uh, our construction management agreements with them for phase three lands. Why are we only talking about it now? The reason why we launched phases four and five on April 19th publicly is because we are more than halfway through phase three. This is the right time to turn our attention to the future phases, to the future lands, because we know that there's a couple of years uh, of preliminary work that needs to be done before we can even talk about construction. So this is the year that we felt we were in the best situated to talk about four and five to ensure that we are ready to go when phase three is com when phase three is complete, that there'll be a seamless transition into four and five, and we don't lose any of the momentum that we've built so far. So I just you know kind of to George's point about broken trust because I hear that and I think that doesn't sound like a reason why you can't announce a fact that you can't announce something you're saying you were too busy to ever mention it to the community for five years. No, I think it would be confusing for our tenants to understand what we were saying in terms of having a developer partner for phase three, but not for the other lands. But quite frankly, there's. I know that there's a concern and I, I recognize that there's uh, a worry about the risk of potentially switching to a developer partner. And I say potentially because going out for a public process does not preclude Daniels from bidding on it. They've also given us publicly a confirmation that they will bid on a request for a proposal. There's a number of constants that are in place that haven't been articulated tonight. And while de our developer partner is a very big player in this redevelopment process, TCHC manages the entire process as, as the owners of the TCHC lands, as the obligations in all of our legal requirements to make sure we get our tenants into our buildings, and to make sure that we are building the buildings we promised the city back in 2005. We have constants in terms of our team, but also our obligations. We have legal agreements in place that have been in place since the beginning and which we will be held accountable for at the end of the refund. There is constants in our RCS staff. But I think what's incredibly important to recognize is that all of you in this room represent a constant for this process. Part of the reason that we have a public consultation for the community benefits portion is that you can hold your future developer partner accountable for what they said to you publicly what they're going to present to you publicly in terms of community benefits and how that they will re realize the vision that the community set forth. I want to be clear, it's not the Daniels vision. Our developer partner is hired to implement the vision that the community established, yeah. that all of you established back in 2005, 2006. It's our job and our developer partner's job to realize that vision. Yeah, I mean, I think the concern is not is less about the vision than it is about the execution and the timelines and the impact in that sense. And how do we hold you accountable when it's a done deal? Okay, how do we hold you accountable when you have made decisions about what kind of retail goes in here, even though you had many, many consultations with neighbors saying what they wanted? What, where, what do we do about the dreadful mistakes that you've made in doing things like that? This is not the first time we've gone back to you. There's, you've not given us a single good reason why you couldn't have said five years ago, this is what's going to be happening. Not only that, Daniels is your partner. Why are you allowing them to sell condos that continue to say that they are still going to be building the entire neighborhood? Yeah. That's still in their literature. If you're a partner, why don't you tell them to stop? Because it's not true. And, all, and, and not once have I ever heard anyone from TCHC say, sorry, we screwed up. We should have talked to you. <laughs> you have never talked to us in that way. You have announced what you're about to do. That is not consultation. Consultation happens before you make a move, not when it's a done deal. And tell me one thing, one way, we can hold any of you accountable when this project is done. One way. There is no way. There is, no way. There is a really good decision to allow people to be on this committee. I will bet you a dollar to a donut that wouldn't have happened without us coming after you. That's not the way it should be. You should be suggesting these things 
because it's right. And that was the vision of the neighborhood. Is there any more commentary from the floor? Anyone else? Your neighborhood association speaks for you. We are responsible to you and nobody else. We're not answerable to TCHC. We're not answerable to Daniels Corporation. We will not be answerable to any other uh, builder who comes in here. It's important that you join our PNA and make sure that we can get information back and forth. You have your tenant council and you're hearing things from there, which comes down from TCHC. We have boards in our buildings and we kind of get information that way. But the only place you'll get everything is your RPNA and you've got to join. Because when all of these people leave, and they will, and I look at people like Sean who, these people are brilliant. Yes. We count on them, we trust them, you know, these become friends, but one day they'll be gone. Yes. And it's your RPNA and each other that's going to be still here.